loved one. My name is John Doe, right here in Tokyo, Japan, for another edition of the Ghost Letters Report. Everyone is aware of that idea, or what we call a common sense, that when you have a major disaster, or a serious emergency, or something kind of catastrophic happens, it's just dirty pool to try to profit off of it. But apparently those who are managing the workers and hiring the workers for Fukushima nuclear power plant disaster never really got the memo. It's come out that a former worker up there named by Yoshitaksu Uichi. I think I just butchered his first name, so I apologize for that. He um, had some interesting revelations about his time working there. Now, he worked there from July 2nd to December 6th of 2012, and he was responsible for um, containing leaks, especially those at the storage tanks. Well, he saw some interesting things going on. Uh, Cost-cutting measures in order to increase profit in any way possible for these um, companies, which are really in a gray area, who's actually managing these workers and who's actually getting the money off this. Um, now, we do know it's contractors, so contractors are giving you know, a set profit. In most cases. Here's how much we're going to give you to do this work. So they have a set profit they know they could possibly attain. Now that profit keeps going down. As they spend money on um, supplies. They spend money on labor. And other such things. So they want to increase their profit a bit. So they decide to cut corners. When containing contaminated radioactive water. Highly contaminated, highly dangerous. Now he, um, the first thing he noticed was that in October 2012, in a case that stands out in his mind, he was given a task to cover five or six storage tanks that did not have lids in an area close to what they call H3, which is an area of extreme high radiation. And it was raining at the time. So there's an added difficulty in pulling such a task off. Well, when he climbed to the top of the tank, he found white adhesive tape covering an opening on the tank itself of about 30 centimeters wide. Now that the purpose of putting that there was to contain a leak, a hole. White uh, duct tape, basically. I know, that sounds crazy, but that's what happened. And during that um, little incident, he uh, took a blade to remove the duct tape he um, applied um, that was on there already, and he changed it by applying a, a sealant agent that's much more effective in trying to cover up a hole in a, in a tank it's covering, it's containing highly radioactive contaminated water. And he was given instructions by his employer that he was used four bolts to um, seal down the lid, although the lid had eight bolt holes. Now that's interesting because in the past, you know, it's come out that these tanks were not made very well. Well, if that's true, it would only make logical sense to take every step possible to make these tanks as secure as possible, and this is not going on. So I guess someone increased their profit a tiny little bit by only putting four bolts to seal lids on these tanks instead of the eight. But, you know, it gets more interesting, right? Uh, he said his colleagues later told him that the use of adhesive tape or duct tape was a usual practice to deal with the problem of sealing in radioactive water. So that was not an isolated incident. This is common practice. Just 
it boggles the mind, but you have to consider that we are in a state of capitalism. A capitalist will do anything possible to increase their capital profit. So anything like this that comes out, it's shocking, yes, it's horrible, but it should not be really all that surprising. Because they're trying to make as much money as they can. They do not care about any safety there. Not their job to, apparently. Now, he said among other makeshift cost-cutting measures was the use of second-hand materials. Uh, Uichi also said that wire nets were used instead of reinforcing bars during the placement of concrete for storage tank foundations. That's just ridiculous. Completely ridiculous to use wire nets instead of the required reinforced bars you need when you place concrete for foundations. That's ludicrous. Now you know these contractors cannot be that stupid. They would not have been able to survive as a company or as a contractor this long being that terrible. So I'm thinking here that there was a lot of money on a lot of these contracts. And they want to get as much money out of it as they can. So they're cutting, you know, things like steel, reinforced bars, cutting things like bolts that you need. Now those will add up over time and those can get quite expensive. You know, steel is not a cheap product. Neither is bolts after a while. I mean, one bolt, nothing, but several hundreds of thousands of bolts. You cut that many, you have may increased your profit margin. It just seems like here, you know, that these contractors working up there for decontamination are just trying to make things look good. Make it look nice and shiny like it's under control. But when you actually look at it, it's in terrible state. They're doing, you know, half-ass work up there. Encouraging workers to participate in this. And when you're in that type of situation, we know the type of workers up there. We know how exploited they are. They really have no choice. This comes back to these dirty contractors and their constant desire for profit at all costs, regardless of the danger and the risk to human lives. Their need for capital profit creates.